Okay, so today I'm going to tell you all about my job as a bacterial zookeeper. Okay? I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's really cool, I promise. Pictures are really cool. Alright, so first I want to ask you, I will show you some pictures of that. So first I want to ask you, do bacteria live in and on your bodies all the time? Yes. Yes, all the time? Yeah, yeah. Even when you're asleep. Actually, even when you're asleep, do you think they're inside your body? Yes. Yeah, they are. Do you think they're inside your tummy? Inside your gut? Do you think they're in your nose? Yes. On your skin? Yes. In your blood? Yes. Yes. Generally, they're not in your blood. I tricked you. If they're in your blood, you might probably be dead. I need to answer that. I was going to say yes. All right, so bacteria live in and on your body all of the time, okay? Everywhere, except really your blood and your brain. So bacteria is plural for bacterium. You call a single cell bacterium and bacterium. So bacteria are single cell, they're microscopic organisms, and they're on the scale of micrometers. And to give you an idea of how small that is, it's like one strand of hair, except even smaller than that. Okay, the width of one strand of hair. So how many bacterial cells are living in your body right now? What do you think? board in the back. Okay, more than a million or less than a million? <coughs> more than, more than, more than, than a million. million. So actually there are one, one quadrillion. Can everyone say that with me? One quadrillion cells, right? So that's 10 to the 15 cells. How many zeros do you think is in one quadrillion? Uh, about 15. 15. 15. So there are 15 zeros here in one quadrillion. What about how many human cells? How many human cells are living in your body? Do you think it's more or less than this number? Some people say more, some people say less. You said less, you're right. So they're actually 10 to the 14. How many zeros in 10 to the 14? 14. 14. So 100 trillion cells, there are only 100 trillion human cells in your body. So this is kind of strange. I just told you that you're made up, you right now, are made up of 10 to the 15 cells of bacteria and 10 to the 14 human cells. So I'm telling you something kind of strange. I'm telling you that you are made up of 10 times more bacteria than you are your own human cells. That's disgusting. That's really weird and disgusting. I know. Actually, it's not all bad bacteria. Some is good. You are so right. You are totally stealing the show, too, because that's what I'm going to talk about. Hey. Okay, so why do you not look like... Oh, nice. It works. Why do you not look like a big disgusting glob of goo is because bacteria are actually really a lot smaller than our cells. So here I'm showing you human cells. Okay, but then this little guy right here is actually Staphylococcus aureus. And this white blood cell is chasing, oh, and it ends up eating it. It ends up eating the Staphylococcus aureus. Who had their hand first? You had your hand up first. Do what? A person already showed you this video. This is a very popular video. Yes, it's not mine. It's actually from Vanderbilt, Dr. Rogers. Your question? Yeah. Um, um, usually, um, I wonder what is that thing on the back of it? What is, oh, this tail end? This is yeah. still part of the white blood cell. So it's a type so of cell in out. your immune system. And it actually helps it move along and chase the bacteria. One more question and I gotta go. On, some more. Do die sometimes? what die? The, the human cells or the bacterial cells. cells? The white blood cells do die sometimes. But right now, this guy was able to eat Staphylococcus aureus. So where else do bacteria live other than in and on your body? On food. On plants. On plants. On flies. On flies. On us. On us. On video games, is that what you said? Yeah, they're actually everywhere. <laughs> Every single surface. Even in your hair. Even in your hair. Yeah. Except even on your laptop. Wait, so, so hold on. So you're getting really freaked out right now. I just told you bacteria are everywhere. Okay, but I also told you that you are made up of one quadrillion bacterial cells. Which is not all bad. You just stole the show again. Do they all cause disease? No. no. If they all cause disease, you'd probably all be dead by now, right? If you, all that made you up made you sick. So, are all bacteria bad? No. No. 
because less than 1% of bacteria cause disease. Okay, so if I want you to remember anything from today, it's that 0.00001% of bacteria cause disease. Right? That's a lot. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1%. Is that a lot or a little? It's a tiny, tiny amount. Okay? Very little. So remember this for today. This is my key takeaway. Bacteria are your friends. Most of them don't make you sick. Okay? 99.9999% of them are your friends. Most bacteria are harmless. Actually, if you use Germex or any other germs, that kills all the germs. Because it's 99.999. It kills almost all of them. So most bacteria, some of them actually help us out. They help us digest food and make vitamins. But then I told you, remember, there are some that cause disease. Okay, so here I'm showing you the very small percentage of them that do cause disease are a problem. So Staphylococcus aureus is an example of one. You guys have heard of MRSA or MRSA before? Who's heard of that? Oh, yeah, you guys, okay. That's Staphylococcus aureus. It infects human tissue and it can make you really sick. And also another example, who's here, who here has heard of strep throat? Yeah, has anyone had it? Oh, yeah, yeah it's not that? fun. So it's actually caused by group A streptococcus, and I'm showing you right here. So there are some that are bad, right? So why do we study bacteria? Because they can both help us and hurt us, and we don't want to get sick, okay? So as a bacterial zookeeper, I listen in on their conversations, okay? I know that sounds kind of weird, and I'm telling you they have conversations. I'll explain that in just a second. So I don't actually listen. I, I, this is a picture of me in a microscope. So I use a microscope to figure out what they're doing. Okay? What are they scheming? So I'm going to tell you something that I learned through reading other people's studies. Okay? So bacteria, this is actually a single bacteria. If you picture it makes something, it makes a small signal. And it secretes that as you get a larger population, that cell grows and divides, and you get a larger population, you get more signals. So the density of the cells increase, and so does the signal. Okay? The neighbors around can sense that there's a ton of signals, because there are a ton of cells. And we actually know that bacteria communicate in this way, using these signaling molecules. And these conversations that they have, using these signals, affect the way they behave. And that's what I study, and it's called chlorosensing. And I know you've never heard of that word before, probably. I actually had to figure out exactly what that word meant when I started to work on this. It's a little embarrassing. So as a, as a 22-year-old, I had to look up the word quorum. But that's what this means, OK? Bacteria can sense their cell number, and that affects their behavior. OK? This population size, then, affect chlorine sensing. This is a question I had. I already showed you that the density of the population affected their ability to talk, but I wanted to know if population size affected their chlorine sensing ability. So here I'm showing you a small population. This is a picture about five cells versus 50 cells. Which one is bigger? 55. Which one's bigger? This one, right? This has more cells in the population. So I wanted to know if bacteria behave like us. Okay, so picture yourself at like a, a soccer game or a football game, and it's small, and there are only a few people around. Here I'm showing you a small football game. Then at a bigger game, what would you feel like compared to that smaller game? Would you get maybe a little bit more rowdy, a little more excited? What do you guys scream at football games or, or soccer games? Uh, you're like, go team, defense, right? You're cheering for your team. Do you think you'd get more excited if you were at an enormous, enormous stadium? Yeah. Maybe a little louder? Because there's so many people around and you're all doing the same thing, right? So I had a question. I wanted to know if bacteria were just like us. If they behaved a little bit differently because there are more of them around. Okay? So in nature, here's the problem, though. Oh, and I brought a prop. Forgot it. In nature, bacteria are often found in these tiny clusters of cells, and just one cluster can make you sick of this disease-causing bacteria. Can make you sick. So I'm talking about 10 to 10,000 cells, and that's what that would look like, just a small, small amount of cells. But I want to actually study these population sizes, and they're tiny. And the problem is, to study a tiny clump of cells is kind of hard, because normally we study bacteria in flasks like this, 
it's actually really large. It contains a ton of bacteria in this. When really what I want is a cage that's the size of your hair. So I'm going to look at a single strand of hair and now compare how small that is to this. Way smaller, right? This is what we normally use in the lab to study. But I only want to look at a tiny, tiny cage of bacteria that's the scale of your width of your hair, of the width of your hair. Okay? So this is really hard to do. We're so tiny. Okay? But actually we're able to do it at UT. So I collaborate with some chemists that can make me tiny bacterial cages. Or you can think of them as houses. Okay? They hold on the scale of a thousand to ten thousand cells. And they're really small, just like the strand of hair, right? So they do this using protein as their bricks. So they're laying protein bricks across, and what it does is actually creates a border that holds the bricks together. So this laser is moving across and connecting those protein bricks together. And eventually, what these chemists are able to make are walls in a roof made of linked protein. So remember, the protein are like bricks. And so what this allows me to do is make any shape that I want and make a cage for bacteria. So here I'm showing you I made a square and a heart-shaped cage. Is everyone kind of following that? Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah? So I showed that I could capture cells, and one really cool thing about these traps or cages or whatever you want to call them is they respond to heat. And so it's 20 degrees this is in Celsius. Cells can swim in and out these small openings, but when you heat these, Structures, they're made of protein, they actually respond to the environment, they heat, or they just swell. So they swell in response to heat. And that swells this door closed, and so if they get stuck inside, they grow inside this tiny cage, and they fill it completely to where eventually they cause the roof to bulge. So they're totally chock full of bacteria here. So I showed that they can grow. I'm actually able to see one cell grow into many over time. I was using Pseudomonas ferruginosa, something my lab uses to study. And here, here's the big picture of what I've been studying for the past probably four and a half years, boiled down into one slide. So I looked at a small population of cells, just like that small football game. And I wondered how chatty the bacteria inside this trap are. Okay? And what I did was I actually engineered them to make green protein when they were chatting to each other. Okay? And so I saw that in this small population, they weren't really chatting very much. But then I took a larger population of cells, just like that larger stadium, right? What do you guys, what do you think happened? What do you think I saw? Was that crowded? They got wilder, right? Just like at the stadium, you're gonna get crazy and wild and cheer for your team. And that's exactly what I saw with bacteria. So they actually made a lot more green protein because they were chatting with each other in an excited way. So there were more of them around, and it caused them to talk more effectively. Okay? So I learned that population size affects communication and behavior of bacteria, just like they affect us at the football and soccer stadium, right? So what did we learn today? Most bacteria are friends. Who agrees with me? Okay, good. The bacteria can talk to each other. Yeah? They can chat with each other, um, and how they chat with each other affects the way that they behave. Oh, look at you guys. I, you didn't even need to raise your hands, but I appreciate it. Okay. And then the size of a group affects group behavior. Yeah? Everyone gets that? Oh, nice. Okay, so I just want to say thank you to the lab I work with, my boss, and these collaborators. These are the guys that actually make the protein traps. It's Marvin Whiteley, my boss, and then Jason Shear and Jody Connor are the ones that actually fabricate those cages. So any questions with that? Yeah? Can you bring a real life line? Can I what? Can you, can you bring a real life line to see? Can I bring a real life what? L uh, lion. Lion? Lion? Can I bring a lion? What does that do with this? We're going to see a bacteria. Not bad. Are you asking for a lion? Like rawr lion? Oh, because I'm a zookeeper. Oh, I see. No, I don't work with any lions. Yes, you do. <laughs> Sorry. What about the monkeys? <laughs> no, I don't actually work at a real zoo.
catfish? Sorry? That's just what I call myself because I keep bacteria in the And then I Oh, you see the monkey. Alright, let's get around.